good uh hi everyone thank you for joining in um i'd like to say thank you to the airbenders for taking up this initiative i think it's great to keep people you know active and learning about new things especially during uh this time um just to give you a small introduction into what we do uh so selene and i work with a company called potential health development and uh we started about five years ago um and essentially what we try to do is you know help people with being more proactive about their health uh both through uh you know a subjective and an objective approach uh, and what this means is really to understand your body but also to kind of objectively be able to see yourselves uh and whether that means doing a test uh you know uh to kind of see where you're at and how you can improve um so we we work with a whole bunch of people uh from kids to older populations from professional athletes to recreational athletes and um the idea is that we adapt with you know different kinds of clients that we work with um so yeah so enough about us um today we're we're excited to talk to you about two different topics uh the first one that we're going to cover is going to be around tournament nutrition which i think is relevant for a lot of y'all um so selene's going to be covering that and the second leg will will be around uh vegetarian you know diets essentially you know how you can have a more complete vegetarian uh diet because i think there's a lot of you know information that's around so i'm just going to try and make it simplified for you okay so selene go ahead Hi guys. So I'll just share my PPT and then we can start. So we're going to talk about uh, tournament nutrition and why is it exactly important or is it actually important uh, for your sport. So uh talk a little bit about it sport. It is uh it's a mini olympic in by itself I would say because it it's a very intense uh sport. there's uh, acceleration there's de- uh, deacceleration and then there's jumping and like it's a lot of things put together uh, uh talking about frisbee so it's a, it's very important to fuel before uh, your game before a tournament and it it doesn't happen just a day before it you have to start preparing for it uh, prior a week uh uh it's it's the same as how you're training for a, a tournament like you start training uh uh before so it's the same way you have to fuel yourself a uh, before so just to before we start uh i would like to first talk about uh the nutrients so the fuel we talking about is the nutrients so the nutrients are of two types the macros and micros as we know and we mainly focus on the macros because these are the ones that give us um uh, the fuel mainly the carbs and in this game particularly the immediate source of energy would be the carbohydrates and that will be consumed in more amount and then comes protein which is equally important when it comes to your muscle recovery for your strength and fats is also important uh, i'll uh, tell you further uh, in the slides and how actually they work together but equally important is the vitamins and minerals uh, from your vegetables nuts and seeds because these act like as a cofactor for the reaction to take place and for your fueling to happen so all the five uh, nutrients has to uh, come in uh, together to have an optimal uh, fueling so as to say so the important thing about nutrients is the timing of it it's not about the uh, it's it is about the quantity but more than that the quantity that you're supplying the timing of it like when exactly you're supposed to do it between your game or before the game so why is it important because uh, it gives us the energy balance and then it enhances recovery and tissue repair and muscle protein synthesis now this is crucial uh, especially for your game because it can be very helpful for your body to function at its optimal level and how you want it so now uh, before going into the game how to prepare before like preparing for the tournament now this starts uh, way before um uh, way before your game and what you have to focus is on the optimal recovery from your training sessions i'm sure all of you all will be training in a particular way suggested by your trainers before the tournament so uh, in that you have to focus on optimally recovering from those sessions because you have to be at your best on the day of the tournament 
so uh, and the second part is to avoid anything that will su suppress your immunity and recovery because both are again uh, very important now what are these inflammatory foods i'll first talk about anti inflammatory foods any uh, any food that is a whole food as in whatever is coming from the plants whole grains vegetables fruits uh, meat directly they are all anti inflammatory foods and when you talk about inflammatory foods these are the foods that uh, that is being processed like if any of these vegetables fruits grains that has been processed so as to say polished or broken down uh, fortified or stabilizers put in they are all inflammatory foods so there's no issue in consuming it but then particularly before the tournament you should refrain from eating it because they are uh, suppress they cause inflammation in the body so that first of all your body is trying to recover from your sessions so it's very important to focus keep the focus on your recovery that to uh, bring down the inflammation because of these foods so mainly i would say uh, the trans fat You're mute. Celine, you're mute. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, so I was talking about the inflammatory foods. So mainly, I would say the trans fat, the fatty foods, and sugar foods. Because sugar, again, uh, when you consume sugar, it takes six hours for it uh, for the body to process it out. So that that is suppressing the immunity and recovery. So refrain from eating these foods. And all these rules. so applied when you are traveling so mostly for your games and for your tournaments you would be traveling uh, to a different country also like or to a different state so when you're traveling it's new food it's in a new place so all these things you have to keep in mind and uh, don't stop yourself from asking the waiter or the place you're eating from that what exactly the food contain is there any hidden facts that you have to be uh, you have to look out for and try to stick to food that is already know you uh, your body is uh, well known of like oats if if you're told you're traveling try not to have anything uh, new just before your tournament because you don't know how your body would react or if you, if you're allergic to it and uh, especially when it comes to allergy try to again ask the person serving that what all the food contains so be um, um uh, be very vigilant about what you are eating if you're eating from outside and uh, just before the tournament how your plate should look like if i should say uh like i said the carbohydrates is the main fuel uh, that that uh, your muscles would use for your kind of a sport so 50 to 60% of your plate should contain the carbs and other carbs uh, is basically quinoa it can be brown rice potatoes the mashed potatoes baked potatoes any of the millets it can also be bread and 30% of it should be protein good protein if it's meat then any of the meat chicken um uh, chicken fish any of them uh, if uh, if it's vegetarians it will be pulses and alia will tell you further which other proteins you can uh, you can opt for and dairy and eggs are also included and you also need good fats not that you need, you should be not eating fats at all but try to have the good fats from nuts seeds and if at all uh, you're cooking at home uh, switch to uh, uh, the rice bran oil cooking oil or a ground nut oil rather than the vegetable oil such as sunflower oil because those are those cause inflammation again Um, and uh, with the protein requirement everyone has this question of how much protein you're supposed to be having 
so particularly your sport um, uh, for females is this, uh, since it's an endurance sport it's 1.2 to 1.4 gram per kg body weight so you should multiply your body weight for example 50 kgs by 1.2 to 1.4 any of them and that will be your protein requirement for the day the same goes for the male it is 1.4 to 1.6 gram per kg body weight per day you can have more than this but then there's only a certain limit that your body will absorb at one one time so there's no use of uh, uh, loading yourself with more protein it will be just an added uh, um, uh, weight to your kidneys to process it out so stick to these figures and this will be the optimum uh, range for protein uh, so and this is uh, this will be like a week prior to the game now a day prior to the game is very very important it's not only with the fueling it also uh, uh, depends on how well you are uh, how, how well you have recovered like uh, is your body feeling optimum and that can, and with recovery the best thing you can do is have adequate sleep like a good amount of sleep if at all you're traveling try to uh, to another country try to have a fixed time to sleep like if you're reaching there days prior try to regularize your sleep get over the jet lag and otherwise uh, like try to put in things to wind down and sleep refrain from using your phone a uh, one hour before and have a proper time like a good 7 to 9 hours of sleep i would say 9 hours of sleep for athletes is very good for recovery and the second important thing is you have to hydrate Hydration is not only uh, on the day of your game. You have to start hydrating yourself before because you have to start your game well hydrated. So I will tell you how about hydration and how to hydrate uh, in the coming slides. And the next thing is uh, like what food you should be eating uh, for dinner, just uh, uh, the meal before your game, the day before your game. So you can increase your carb uh, to 60 to 70 percent and try to uh, have a simple carb rather than a complex carb and like something like pasta, rice or potato with a medium portion of protein because our aim here is to keep your full reserves uh, like high, like full. So uh, over here we'll focus more on carbs. So 60 to 70 percent carbs in the form of pasta, rice, potato with a medium portion of protein if at all you're eating meat than one to two pieces and if you're, uh, if you're eating any of the vegetarian sources a cup of it and you equally need uh, a medium portion of vegetables as an antioxidant as an anti-inflammatory so put in the vegetables also and try to have a meal what is mentioned here that you know of uh, try not to have anything new and limit your fats because that uh, decreases uh, the time of digestion. Uh, uh, sorry, it increases the time of digestion. So uh, this should, uh, this is how your plate should look like for dinner, and you can combine a fresh fruit also along with this. Now going to the game day nutrition. So uh, before you start the game, I know you're well prepared mentally, but along with that, to support your fueling, you have to uh, be ready with your essentials. So you have to be independent about, uh, like independently have the things uh, that will help you fuel. That will be whatever you can carry as a pre, during and post uh, game snack. I'll mention what those snacks are in the further slides. Your electrolytes, if you're using, and different bottles for your water and electrolytes. Everyone should have your separate bottle because it's very important to, uh, to measure the amount of water you're drinking uh, on the on a particular day because the studies show that um, uh, the main thing that is refraining from them for their performance is hydration so and uh, they clearly don't know how much water they are drinking how much water they should be drinking so it's very important to have these things uh, with you so pack the essentials you have to stay hydrated prior so the uh, um, stay hydrated prior focus on nutrient timing I'll be explaining the next slide and all this is also uh, important uh, if you're consecutive uh, games like in a tournament you also have to focus on the recovery post game because that is what will dictate uh, your performance and your energy levels in your next game 
so the uh, i'll be explaining to you that also now going to your game day fueling hydration i'll be taking separately this is only with your cups and what you're supposed to eat so uh, three to four hours before the game, it's usually the um, proper meal, like a breakfast, if at all the game starts uh, um, around 11, 12, or it should be lunch if it's in the evening. So it's a proper meal that you'll have to consume, which contains uh, rich, uh, again, same 60 to 70 percent carbohydrates, medium portion of protein, and a very small amount of fat. If there's no fat also, if there's no issue, but try to focus mainly on the carb, mainly on the carbs and a little amount of protein because uh, the carbohydrates is the immediate source of fuel that you'll be using in your game and the simple carbs that you can eat is rice sweet potato uh, uh, can be consumed uh, two hours before the game you can uh, you're supposed to have uh, something that with carbs and a good amount of uh, like a little bit of fat but good fat that will give a sustained release of energy. So you won't have a crash before your game. So that it is a combination of carbs and uh, um, carbs, basically. So it could be a millet muesli or a quinoa muesli with a fruit. Uh, this is something you can carry. Uh, it can be a fruit like watermelon and orange with a nut butter or a nut and seed mix. Again, these are the things you can carry with you. Oatmeal plus apple or uh, berries if you if you are if it's available, or it could be a sports bar that is uh, available. So this combination is important, but only two hours before the game, not, um, not one hour or during the game, because the fats will again, like I said before, it will uh, affect the digestion, and uh, some people will feel the discomfort in their stomach. Uh, so at this point of time, try to not have something very sweet or uh, with. Um, quick sugar like a refined sugar because again to break down sugar uh, your body um, like uh, at that moment it's not the right time to break down sugar so uh, fructose from fruits would be an ideal source to have one hour before the game you can again offer something with uh, again the fruit sugar it could be apricots or raisin like uh, like a handful of it or it could be dates banana apple or it could be a glass of fresh fruit juice so this is again something you can carry and uh, so this is one hour before the game so there's no fat it's only carbohydrates so we know that your uh, fuel uh, reserves are optimal and during the game whenever you get a break uh, it's uh, a very important to hydrate and also have something again with carbs so very easily um, like and very um, uh, like during the game you're actually very tired and it's difficult to chew on something so something like banana or dates or you even get a date paste it's something like that is very easy for you to uh, have so you can just have bits and bites of it whenever you get a break during the game to be more specific about how much you have to eat uh, uh, and you have to you want to weigh the carbs there are studies uh, and research that has proved that the said amount the carbohydrate ingestion amount is what is very is the most effective that is three to four hours before the game you have to ingest one to four grams per kg of your body weight and uh, the same uh, two hours before and during is 30 to 60 and after your game you're supposed to ingest one to 1.2 gram per kg of your body weight so these uh, this is per hour so that is what you have to ingest per hour I'll give you examples in the next slide about uh, what are the food sources that has um, um, 30, to, uh, 30 grams of carbohydrates each. And like I said, the post-game uh, uh, recovery is very important for your consecutive games. So uh, the main aim of a post-game nutrition is to, uh, uh, is to refuel, repair, and rehydrate because you need uh, to refuel because you have exhausted all your reserves. So it's very important to quickly refuel those reserves so that it aids in recovery. So carbohydrate will be the fuel. Protein will be uh, for the repair, for the muscle repair. Fluid and electrolytes will be to rehydrate because you've lost a lot of uh, um, salts and also fluid 
so it is very important to rehydrate it so that there's no dehydration uh, related uh, problems and there's a, there's a high need of antioxidants that is through colored vegetables so uh, even research and the studies with particularly also to frisbee and also other games uh, has suggested that co-ingestion of protein and carbohydrate as soon as possible after the game has shown uh, benefit to recovery so there is a certain uh, ratio that is uh, put forward uh, for this ingestion it's more uh, it's two types 3 is to 1 and 4 is to 1 is what is followed 3 is to 1 as in three parts of carbohydrate to one part of protein or four parts of carbohydrate to one part of protein so if you're having one part of protein that is 25 grams or say 30 grams you have to have uh, three parts of carbs along with it uh the examples are the, uh, the examples are like a pro if you have a protein powder with you you can have a protein powder smoothie that will give you the protein part and a fruit bowl uh, with an oatmeal will give you the carbohydrate part you can have a whole grain lean meat salad uh, in uh, with a sandwich or a wrap which will again a good combination of protein to carb greek yogurt with berries and muesli uh, or any of the protein sources in a vegetable stir fry uh, with rice or noodles it could be an entire meal by itself uh so these are the examples uh, that you can um uh, see as a part of where you can calculate which part of protein to how many part of carbohydrates the example of 20 to 25 gram of protein would be three eggs uh, two cups of uh, plain yogurt two cups of chocolate milk 100 grams of chicken fish or beef uh 30 grams of whey protein powder and examples of 30 grams of carbohydrates are like sweet potato like one entire sweet potato or uh, one glass of fruit smoothie or uh, one or uh, one big banana or two small banana or it can be one sports bar which has uh, rolled oats or any other source of carbohydrates in it so when you uh, when you're buying a sports bar i would suggest you to uh, read the nutritive label and see what all is added to it in uh, as ingredients or if uh, in place of carbs it should be a solid uh, whole grain carb and not uh, simple sugars so uh, choose a sports bar that is um, uh, that is made of whole ingredients now uh, uh equally important to food is uh, hydration so talk, talking about hydration now dehydration is directly related to increase meri awaaz mute karni hai think uma needs to unmute herself Yeah. Um. Okay. Fine. So uh, dehydration is directly related to increased fatigue, increased perception of effort, and has also proved uh, in in with research, especially in frisbee, deterioration of the performance, and even I would say the cognition, because uh, along with the uh, um, along with the energy, it's important to for the reflexes and. Cardinal. So dehydration is uh, is uh, I have uh, resulted in an effect on all these components, and a study uh, done has also said that the sweat loss can be from one to two meters per hour in a frisbee player. So there is a way of um, uh, like finding out your sweat rate, which is uh, which can be done uh, not on the day of the competition, uh, but uh, during your training session. so uh, i'll tell you how to do it if you can it will be a good thing to do so as to understand uh, what your sweat rate is because uh, sweat rates differ from person to person and even depends on the weather that you're playing in so during a training just before your training session you can weigh yourself and, uh, and then weigh yourself after your training session uh, uh, minus uh, minus the thing if you say a b minus it the c you have to uh, that will be uh, 
um, the sea, you have to add whatever water you've ingested during your training session. For example, the training session was for one hour and you ingested uh, 500 ml of water and you lost um, 500 grams. Then it would be 500 plus 500 ml water, that will be one liter per hour. So that will be your sweat rate. Your sweat rate will be one liter per hour. So that's how much you have to rehydrate during your game. So before the game starts, you have to uh, be uh, you have to start your game hydrated. Now there's one easy way to check if you are hydrated. That is to monitor your uh, urine color. Now this you can start doing days prior to the game. Uh, your color of the urine always has to be pale blue. So uh, try to uh, 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 look into that. So then you know that you're hydrated or not. Now, uh, you can drink around 1 liter to 1.5 liters of water 1 to 3 hours before the game, as this has proved to expand the blood volume and even improve the heat dissipation and thereby improve the performance. And you can have an, uh, 250 to 350 ml just 10 to 15 minutes before the match. So this is the amount of water you have to drink. Now, during the match, uh, so along with water, when we talk about hydration and dehydration, another component that is equally important is electrolytes. Because when you're sweating, there are two things you're losing. There's fluid and then there's salts that you're losing. So you need to rehydrate yourself with both the things so that uh, there is uh, that, that actually dictates your hydration state. So yeah, there are different electrolytes uh, in the market. Uh, but uh, uh, these electrolytes, we would suggest you to try during your training session to see which actually uh, suits uh, you. And if you look at the electrolytes, they, the, some of them have carbohydrates in them. So you can again calculate how much carbohydrates you will be uh, drinking uh, per hour. So make sure again you have your bottle and then you're having electrolytes uh, that doesn't include, like I know it's mixed in water, but you have to have both separately because osmolarity, the composition of water in uh, electrolyte mix and uh, water is completely different. So you have to have a separate bottle for water and a separate bottle for electrolytes. And during your breaks, whenever possible, you have to drink at least 100 to 250 ml of water and sip on electrolytes uh, during that time. So this will have, uh, uh, so if, if if you can meet your carbohydrate demand through your electrolytes, you can do that. But you can also uh, um, like increase efficiency by adding a banana or the dates as mentioned before to it. Now post game, 500 ml to one liter per hour. Like I said, if your sweat rate is one liter per hour, it's important to rehydrate yourself again with the same amount. Again, post game, you have to put in electrolytes also. The salts also is equally important. So you can have your electrolyte drink post game also. Uh, and one more, uh, a day prior to the game, also you can have uh, electrolytes. It again will um, ensure you are hydrated well. Okay. And another thing that will help you with recovery is uh, ice bath or cold shower post match. It will cool down your body and also assist in recovery and also consuming a post-game snack as mentioned, and hydration. And again, the most important thing, I'll repeat again, the sleep. Sleep, uh, the quality of sleep is directly proportional to your performance and recovery. So sleep well and uh, lock in at least nine hours of sleep, undisturbed deep sleep, and uh, mm, uh, focus on recovery post the game. So that's all I have to say. And I would wish you all the best for your future uh, tournaments to come and games to come. I hope this information was um, uh, would benefit you. And uh, yeah, so we have another topic. I would uh, hand it over to Alia. To Should we just do like a couple of questions on on tournament nutrition and then we can move? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, Salim okay. back on. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Guys, anybody has any questions? Uh, you can just unmute and ask your question or you can just post it on the chat. Uh, hi, Celine and uh, Alia. Thank you for the session. I'm Sneha here. I have one question. For yeah. uh, so you mentioned about uh, antioxidants. 
that's something that's really important for us right to recover other than hydrating and other things so and you mentioned that there are only colorful vegetables that can provide us with this can you suggest something other than that because you know during tournaments is very tough after match to you know really uh, find these kind of uh, things so is there any uh, other alternative to the vegetables so not only vegetables like if fruits are included and uh, all the post game snacks or during there's a lot of fruits uh, involved because it gives carbs but also equal amount of antioxidants in it there are different types of uh, antioxidants in every fruit so fruit could be because we wouldn't suggest having a vegetable uh, because it gives antioxidants but not much of carbs at that moment so fruits would be a good option to get the antioxidants in uh, at that particular time during also, the game could, yeah if i could just add to that i think a lot of the time with traveling athletes um, it is sometimes necessary to also depend on an external supplement so whether it's a vitamin c uh or you know even if it's something like turmeric for example uh it it's it's okay to kind of do that because sometimes especially if you're traveling to like a really you know weird country and you can't really prepare your own food or things like that those are times that it's okay to rely on supplements to give you like a little bit of a boost yeah so even taking a vitamin c uh at that point is is okay or adding the turmeric like she said is a very good option to do. because you can carry the turmeric also but along with the turmeric remember to uh, put in a pinch of uh, pepper because uh, uh, it needs pepper for it to be absorbed so have a turmeric pepper mix always with you and you can add that to your smoothies uh, your porridge uh, that'll be a good option okay should we consume 30 grams of protein after every game is ajit's question okay so again uh, to uh, protein it there is there's a conflicting research saying but then there's always a range it's not exactly 30 grams that you have to consume it can range from 20 to 30 but then like i said more than 1.6 grams of protein uh, in a day won't be absorbed won't be useful uh, till 1.8 there are people who've done to two and above but again uh, it's not proved to be beneficial so i would say if you could put in 20 to th- between 20 to 30 grams of protein that would be good but don't forget your carbs like post uh, any kind of endurance activity or post a game you have to put your carbs back in because that's like your fuel that you're putting back in it so think of yourself like sometimes when you're uh, like say if you're a car and you're obviously using your energy through the match and you're on like a quarter tank you want to refuel right and carbs are the only way to kind of do that so it's important to put carbs in as well i think you know a lot of people have this concept of you know i need to take my protein shake after a workout or you know carbs are really really as important okay uh because what happens is if you run out of fuel and if you run out of energy then what happens is that your body will go to your glycogen in your muscle and you don't want that to happen right so you want to put back all the carbs that you've burned through the exercise as well okay protein too but carbs also typical tournament scenario we have at least 3 games a day so should i consume after every meal okay that's a that's an interesting question um i think typically like you know when you have 3 games a day and if it's back to back especially you have to recover before every tournament so um you know you can look at there are different options about when to put in protein uh, protein synthesis does also happen when we're sleeping so there sometimes we do suggest doing overnight protein but especially when you have to recover between games what you really want to be putting in first is your carbs okay uh, there are different ratios that we talk about it can be 4 to 1 3 to 1 but i think what's extremely important first especially if to re- if you have to refuel before a match and if there's only like a 2 hour window then you want to be putting the carbs in first and then you can put the protein in but i would i would recommend putting it you know more towards the latter part of the day because protein takes more time for it to digest than carbs and carbs are quickly absorbed and that's what you actually need for your next game yeah you need to fuel refuel Wait, any more question guys or we can move on to the next topic okay so 
Yeah, I on. think we're good to go. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. I'm just one second. Sorry, I get very confused. Uh, share screen. Okay. Um, all right. So before I start, um, you know, I just want to say that, um, you know, a lot of like, so just with regards to being a vegetarian and, you know, a vegetarian diet, sorry, I'm just going to make this a full screen. Sorry, one second. My is working. From beginning. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So I think that a lot of people, um, you know, choose to change to, to become vegetarians. A lot of people uh, have, you know, been born vegetarians and have genetically been vegetarians for generations. Um, you know, some people choose to become vegetarian for ethical or animal rights reasons. Um, and so whatever way that, you know, you relate to it together, I think it's, first of all, I want to say it's a personal decision. Okay. Um, my, my, personal philosophy about food is that you have to know what works for you and in what combination and um, in general I think we all need to be eating more vegetables and fruit um, you know a lot of governments uh, including Australia America and all over Europe they all say that most you know, of the population isn't really getting as much fruit and vegetable as they should uh, in India though we don't really have data that points towards that because I think a lot of us do eat a lot of vegetables in general, but I always say that we can definitely eat more, and definitely eat uh, more plant-based foods and incorporate them. Um, so just to clarify, you can have a very balanced vegetarian diet. Okay, it's just about knowing what are the components that you're including, what are the components you have access to, and also that's, you know, what are the boxes that you're checking, what are the things you're missing out on, um, through vegetarian foods, I think some nutrients are easier to get, whereas uh, some nutrients aren't as easy. And, you know, you need to figure out what are the sources, how am I going to get that in? Um, and that's what I'm you know, going to try and cover today. Okay, so uh, first of all, a vegetarian diet is, you know, there is a kind of blanket term, but it does also include a lot of these different uh, types uh, of how you choose to be a vegetarian okay so again i i wanted to just go through all of this because if you know that okay i fall into one of these categories then the first thing is to know okay i'm not eating this and i've taken this out of my diet what am i putting back in you know what am i substituting back in and i think it's important to you know to, to really be aware of that okay? so the different kinds of vegetarians are uh, first we have flexitarians okay which are basically people who uh, are kind of in the middle okay so they they eat mainly plant-based foods but occasionally you know they do eat egg fish meat but generally they avoid you know, products uh, then we have people who are who choose to be pesky pesky uh, vegetarians who will not eat meat and will not eat any you know, kind of non-vegetarian product but they will eat uh, fish uh, we then have lacto ovo vegetarians. Okay, so again, sometimes this could be because you discover that you have a lactose intolerance and thereby you're not including it in your diet. Or we do have vegetarians who eat uh, dairy uh, and will not eat eggs or vice versa. So it's important, I think, first to recognize where you're at. And again, this is not to put yourself in the category and you know not to kind of get cultish about it but just to kind of see okay this is what I'm eating uh, on an everyday basis and if I don't have this one category of food in my diet you know how am I substituting it okay and lastly we have vegans okay so vegans avoid eating any kind of animal products or any kind of ingredient so uh, you know again there are phases of vegans some some vegans don't have honey some vegans don't use leather you know so it's it's very personal and i think in general um, you know it's it's what you choose to eat is a personal decision okay so um, this is an argument that you know many people have and i think that the scientific community is very um, you know well it's a debatable topic and i think there's still the jury's still not out because if you look at it from an anthropology point of view, 
we do have canines. We do know we do have evidence to say that uh, you know ancient humans did eat animals. Uh, but the herbivore argument, for example, is that our front teeth are flatter, uh, our stomach acid is not as low as, say, what a carnivore is. Okay, so essentially, we're probably closest to doing what we call uh, omnivores because, uh, again, we are opportunistic feeders. Uh, human beings adapt to what's available uh, around them, and we have seen that our digestive system can handle both animal and plant protein. So, again, I, I want to say that it, it it's important to make an informed decision when you choose to be a vegetarian or not be a vegetarian. One is to see how it's suiting you, to see how it's suiting your energy, to see how it's suiting your moods, your recovery. And the other is also to be aware of saying, okay, I'm eating this and this is what I'm getting in my diet. But because I've taken out X, what am I doing to put you know, that back in? Okay, so um, there are a number of advantages of being vegetarian. Okay, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of you all saw um, Game Changers. Okay, um, and I think that uh, in a lot of ways, I did talk about a number of topics, but I just want to, um, you know, and I will share this, um, this link with you all after, you know, this session, uh, because it's also important to see the kind of literature that's quoted in a movie like that, right? Like how scientifically backed is it? How many studies have been done? Things like that. So I will, uh, I'll share that link with you because it's an interesting perspective from someone who's a sports scientist and he's, he's one of the, he's known as like the grandfather of sports science, so to speak. So I think it's important to get that other side perspective as well. Okay. But just for now, let's talk about the advantages of being vegetarian. Okay. Which are many. Okay, so one is definitely plant foods have proven to be less inflammatory when you compare it to animal derived foods. Uh, plant foods, plant-based, uh, a plant-based diet of being a vegetarian also, it's a great opportunity to get more fiber into our diets because um, we have, you know, we're going to definitely eat more vegetables and more fruit and more whole grains. So that's adding in fiber. Um, of course, an increased amount of natural antioxidants, polyphenols, um, you know, vitamins and minerals that we're able to derive from uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, but also interestingly, it does have a positive effect on our gut microbiome. Okay, now our gut microbiome uh, essentially is important because it really influences a lot of things, uh, not just our moods, but the way our body is able to break down certain things and also uh, what our disease risk for certain things could be. Okay, so there are, uh, I just quoted one study here, but there are some studies that show, you know, switching to a diet which has no meat products and is heavily reliant on plants appears to make certain types of, you know, your microbiome flourish. Again, I do highly recommend people to do an individualistic test uh, and not kind of, you know, use a blanket rule for them. Okay, so again, it's interesting to see how are you making that swap. Okay, now, for example, if you're someone who's, um, you know, switching from non-vegetarian to vegetarian, you're, you're obviously going to substitute that meat and that non-vegetarian food with something. Now, if you're substituting it with more vegetables and more fruit, which is great because that fiber serves as prebiotics, which are going to really feed those probiotics in your gut. That's great because that's going to break down the short chain fatty acids and that's great for you. However, if you're going to, you know, substitute that with more processed vegetarian foods, uh, I also see in the market that a lot of vegetarian, vegan alternatives that are trying to be like non-veg foods contain a lot of uh, emulsifiers, contain a lot of you know ingredients that you really don't want there. So as long as you're sticking to whole, um, you know, unprocessed vegetarian food, you know, you're good to go. Okay, so. Again, balancing out a vegetarian diet. Okay, so now again, it's important to see that because certain foods are cut out, other foods need to be put in to provide the same or similar kind of nutrient value. Okay, so for example, if you've been a vegetarian your whole life, then your body, that's why your body has adapted to that. But for example, if you've transferred from being a non-vegetarian for like 20 years to suddenly becoming a vegetarian, what I do recommend is to really sit down and figure out how am I putting those foods back in, okay? And um, I'm talking about B12, which I know is a controversial subject uh, in the movie uh, Game Changers. And essentially, yes, we do get uh, B12 from the soil, from the microbiome that, and the bacteria uh, that are in the soil that, you know, transform to our fruits and vegetables. However, 
what's important to note now is that our, our soil is not the same it was you know, centuries ago or even decades ago. Uh, and so our soil is not full of that rich uh, bacteria that transfers to us. So for example, if you have like a garden uh, in your backyard and you're you know, getting that kind of vegetables, sure. But most of us don't have access to that and we're getting really refined, sometimes GMO related you know, uh, fruits and vegetables. And so really speaking, uh, the amount of B12 in that is negligible. And so animal sources are really a better way. Um, and we've seen this also in blood tests. So, for example, one thing is, again, to cite a study and to say, you know, we saw a study of various peoples and it, it was found that their B12 was high or low. And that's a study of, you know, population of so many people. What's important to see is for you, how does it work, right? So it's not necessary that all vegetarians have B12, but in my personal experience, and I've seen maybe about 200 to 300 blood tests, I'd say 95% of vegetarians have showed low levels of B12. They have showed slightly on the lower range. Okay. Um, and again, it's not to say that non-vegetarians don't have low B12. Okay, so I'm just going to deviate a little bit, but sometimes non-vegetarians who don't have enough stomach acid will not be able to um, absorb vitamin B12, even if they're eating meat. Okay. And so for us, when we see a non-vegetarian with low B12, it's a red flag. But we often see vegetarians or vegans who do have low B12. And so that's an essential vitamin to put in. Why is the essential vitamin is that our body does not produce B12. And so you need to get it, uh, you know, externally, like vitamin D. Okay, so again, um, some vitamins and minerals have lower bioavailability. Oops, sorry. Some uh, vitamins and minerals have lower bioavailability in plant sources. So for example, things like vitamin D3, uh, which is essentially synthesized from the sun. We don't really get too much of D3 from our food. And uh, given that we're Indian, our body's capacity to synthesize vitamin D3 is not as high as people who are seeing European or American. Again, this is an anthropology reason. Um, because we're closer to the equator, we you know, have so many months of sunlight, our bodies have not adapted to requiring ourselves to absorb that much from the sun. However, as we go higher towards the poles, because they get less, less sunlight through the year, their bodies have attuned themselves to being able to absorb better. Okay, so vitamin D3 is a common deficiency that we see in everybody, all Indians, irrespective of their food choices. Okay, um, when it comes to things like iron, okay, so we have two types of iron. We have heme iron and non-heme iron. Okay, and heme iron is what comes from animals and non-heme iron comes from plant sources and so it is easier for the body to actually absorb heme iron from animals compared to uh, you know from uh, plant sources uh, things like zinc okay so zinc uh, a lot, zinc is found in a lot of um, you know vegetarian foods like legumes seeds nuts but often what happens is and this is true for everybody that uh, we're not able to get the benefits of zinc because sometimes um, there are things called phytates so if you if you see why we soak all of our dals and our seeds and you know try to get them to become sprouts is that the their bioavailability increases and it's easier to absorb in our body. Okay. The third thing is omega-3. Okay, now omega-3 uh, fatty acids, EP and DHA, uh, are again essential amino acids. Uh, sorry, essential uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids, and uh, they are typically found more in fish. Okay, we are able to get some uh, fats from vegetarian sources so like chia seeds, nuts and seeds have something called ALAs, but they're not able to give us EPA and DHA, which is why we often suggest vegetarians or vegans to supplement with omega-3. Okay, so uh, that was just to cover kind of, you know, uh, micronutrient requirements that can change if we choose to be vegetarian. Okay, and we just have to kind of be aware of them and put them back into our diet. Okay, uh, having said that, Everyone can have these deficiencies. They're not limited to only vegetarians. But I wanted to say that sometimes certain of these vitamins and minerals are just easier to get from animal sources. Okay, so in general, uh, try to just be attentive to what kind of plant sources you're eating and what you're getting from them. Okay, um, okay. so this is in general for everybody. Um, why we say eat the rainbow is because there are different uh, colors and different foods that give us uh, a lot of benefits okay and so an easy thing to do is just to make sure that you're eating at least 
uh, two to three colorful vegetables and fruit a day. Okay, again, based on what's easily available, seasonally available. You know, if something is not in season, then don't go and order it. Uh, but just ensure that that that's an easy way to kind of keep track on how to increase your vegetables and fruits through the day. Okay, so when we say you know what should your plate kind of look like? Okay, uh, Celine gave you an example of you know how you prepare for tournament nutrition, uh, and that's very specific to someone who's an athlete or taking part in an activity. Um, this is also pretty much the same. But essentially, when you look down at your plate, you want to have all these elements in it. Okay. Now, when we look at carbs and fats, okay, let's start with carbs. When we look at carbs, carbs are universally available to vegetarians, non-vegetarians, and there's no real non-veg source of carbs. So carbs are kind of universal. Okay. But when it comes to things like protein and fat, they do kind of vary. Um, so if you look down at your plate, you want your plate to look like this. Okay, and I mean at like say a lunch or a dinner uh, or even a breakfast. Right? We want to get in all these components into our diet. Okay, so vegetables and or fruit should ideally make half of your plate. So a combination of a cooked vegetable and a raw vegetable. So cooked vegetables, some, some vegetables, uh, you know, their bio, bioavailability increases when you cook them. And some vegetables are better eaten raw. Okay, um, and so you want a combination of the two because the raw vegetables will also help with fiber. Okay, uh, you want a quarter of your plate to be greens and starches. Okay, so these are more whole grain. Try to choose whole grain variety of carbohydrates. Uh, so, for example, if you eat white rice, try to switch to brown rice or red, red, red rice because of that fiber that's you know increased uh, in that. Uh, if you're eating um, wheat, then try to switch to whole wheat. Uh, get a variety of, of carbs in your diet. You know, eat uh, millets, vary your millets through the week. Uh, you can do sweet potatoes, you can do quinoa, you can do buckwheat. There are a lot of sources. Um, and again, when it comes to protein, I'm going to cover vegetarian sources of protein. Okay, but essentially things that are easily available right now, um, if you are eating eggs, eggs, if you if, if that's what you follow, uh, and eggs and dairy are allowed, then eggs are fine. Yogurt is a good source. Paneer is a good source. If you're not eating eggs and not eating dairy, then you can look at um, things like tofu. You can look at things like uh, nuts and seeds, uh, lentils, legumes, peas, beans. Those are all great protein sources as well. Okay. And lastly, we do need to add our fats in. Okay. So fats are easy to add in. Uh, one is nuts, seeds. Uh, avocados when they're in season, uh, coconut, okay, those are good good quality fats to add in. And for example, if you're not having dairy, okay, uh, you, there are now a lot of dairy alternatives available. So one, I mean, a lot of them you can make at home. So things like oat milk, uh, almond milk, cashew milk. Um, and now I think there's some companies that also make peanut curd and things like that. So if, if you made a switch recently from dairy to non dairy and you really want to put those things back in, there are substitutes that are now available. And uh, additionally, of course, what I mentioned about the supplements. Uh, too. Okay, so in general, uh, again, uh, I've covered this, but try to make sure that your fruits and vegetables cover half your plate. Okay, it's important. Uh, again, both are good, but because fruits contain fructose, we want to not have as ma many fruits as vegetables. Uh, so again, general guidelines about three to four servings of fruit and four to six of vegetables. But again, this will change depending on whether you have a medical condition, whether you're an athlete, depending on you know, what's happening. Um, again, as I said, whole grains, uh, you want to try to choose a complex carb over a simple carb because complex carbs are going to break down slower uh, and therefore the, the breakdown of glucose is also going to happen slower. Uh, and of course, plant-based proteins. Um, so green peas, all your lentils, all your dals uh, are good. Um, soy, if you're okay with that, uh, paneer. Uh, and of course, it's important to know that all uh, vegetarian protein is also not created equally, and I'm going to cover that uh, going ahead. But again, other sources that have both uh, protein and fat sources are anything like nuts and seeds. So hemp seeds are great, uh, and they're now available in, in India quite easily. Uh, there's a company called Boheko. There's another company called India Hemp Company. Um, so they make like a really nice mix that you can just sprinkle on top of a salad or on top of your morning cereal. Um, you know, seeds are great. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, uh, watermelon seeds. 
uh, chia seeds, all kinds of nuts. So try to get in fat as well because fat's uh, also an essential part of your diet. Okay, how much protein? So I think Celine uh, kind of covered this, but again, I think when, when people talk about vegetarian diets, they're very, very concerned about, oh, you know, I'm not getting enough protein into my, you know, into my diet. And comparing animal protein and plant protein, I think very very important is there's no pro there's no recommended protein for everyone universally. It's very very dependent on what you're doing. Uh, so it will change between men and women. It will change between how active you are, what kind of sport you're playing, and so it should be calculated based on like a gram per kilogram, like like Celine mentioned, and understand what your requirement is, and then see okay how am I going to get it. Uh, again, the other thing with protein is we want to try and get it through the day. So don't just you know take it in one shot. You want to have a little bit of a little bit of it at, at breakfast, a snack, at lunch, and at dinner. Again, uh, we can get into proteins in, in detail, but with regards to when to you know, consume proteins. But I would say, as a general recommendation, try to get it through the day. Okay, so this is just an example of um, how much of protein is present in different plant sources. Okay, so this is just plant based, just plant based. Um, and so again, this is just an easy guide for you to use. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a little guide that you know, everyone can just look at and uh, I'll share it with you all. But just to see that a lot of your uh, you know, nuts and seeds um, and, and beans have a lot of protein in them actually. So this is typically like a protein, pro protein proportion is actually how much you'd be able to eat at say a given meal. But uh, if you look at it, um, paneer is not included in this chart. Uh, but if, if, for example, we compare tofu and paneer, uh, what's important to see is that paneer also has a lot of fat in it. It's not only protein. So comparatively, tofu has more protein and less fat. Okay? Um, and similarly, we're just looking at the other kinds of uh, beans that we you know, commonly eat, lentils, green beans, mungal, chana. Now, when we compare it to say animal protein, of course, we're, we're, we are getting a little more, you know, protein for the amount of animal protein that we consume. Uh, and this is just to kind of give you an example. Again, for the ones who do have dairy and do eat eggs, uh, two eggs on average, I think maybe not 15 grams, I think a little less than that is what it would give. And again, even things like milk uh, are high in protein. Um, whey protein, if you choose to have whey protein, is also something that can supplement but again try to get all your food and it is possible it is possible to get a lot of our food from protein from uh, food sources uh, why people choose to supplement the protein powder is just because eating that much food you can get from the cement. So i'm able to drink my 30 grams of protein then i'm able to drink my 20 to 25 grams of protein i'm gonna do that okay so this is just uh, again uh, for those who don't have dairy uh, you know, the, the, the amount of protein that's available in different plant-based protein powders. Okay, so we look at pea, soy, hemp, and brown rice. Um, a lot of people and a lot of our clients have chosen to become vegan. And so uh, essentially, these are the different types of protein powders that are currently available in the market. Um, I would recommend you first try it out because I found a lot of people have had intolerances towards pea protein. And so um, it's important to just see if it's suiting you, like try for a couple of weeks, see how your gut is doing. And if you're not having bloating or irritation, then, then definitely switch. And if you're someone who's been having whey protein, again, there's nothing wrong with it, but just ensure that it suits you. Because I found that a lot of people are not able to break down whey protein. And so then they choose to have like an isolate or something like that. But again, what... Uh, what suits you is not going to suit the next person, which is why when you choose the foods that you're trying to eat, it's very, very individualistic and very, very uh, personalized. Okay. Um, all right. So this is just, an, just something I put together to understand how you can get your protein requirements through the day. Okay. And again, if you use that calculator to see what your, how, many, how many grams of protein you need to get per day, this is an easy way to kind of just see how much you know, protein you're getting, you know, from different aspects of uh, foods that you eat through the day. Okay, um, okay. so uh, I just wanted to cover a few simple proteins, uh, vegetarian proteins that uh, also have a 
all the nine essential amino acids okay so amino acids are basically building blocks of protein uh 11 of them we make and synthesize in our body and nine of them are what we have to get externally so if any of you have taken like a bcaa powder you'll see that they have leucine isoleucine and valine and those are again three essential amino acids that our body doesn't produce and so we get it externally um and so that's one way to get bcaa's in but there are also vegetarian proteins that have uh, a good uh, you know variety of amino acids so i just wanted to highlight some of these and show you how you can put them or add them into your diet okay so chia seeds are kind of like uh, you know it's it's they good protein and they good uh, you know even though it doesn't contain that much protein they do have all nine essential amino acids and they also are good fats okay uh, so ala is uh, rich in ala and so again chia seeds are easy you can just soak them overnight in water uh, they kind of form this gelatinous uh, you know uh, layer around them and you can just drink it uh, in in your water or you can put them into uh, a you know yogurt or a smoothie uh, it's great as a topping um then we're going to talk about soya beans and soy products again um there is a lot of controversy about soy uh and you know how uh, for example the, what effects it has on the body but essentially um soy is a complete protein it also does have uh, magnesium which is an essential mineral uh, you know for skeletal muscle health um and so again it is it is what i would consider to be a complete protein you can get it from tofu uh, or you can get it from soy milk uh, and again uh, tofu something that's easy to incorporate in your diet it's quite versatile you can add different flavors to it you can make like a scramble you can stir fry it uh, put in a curry easy uh, hemp seeds okay so hemp seeds again are double because they're good in protein and they also have good omega 3 uh so like chia seeds hemp seeds hemp seeds also you can you know toss them into a smoothie or put them on top of a salad uh and now we have access to hemp seeds in india and hemp hearts so hemp is a really really upcoming uh, and good source of vegetarian protein okay uh quinoa okay i know uh people again quinoa is something that uh you know in terms of uh whether it's sustainable to grow or not uh you know there is obviously an established argument about that and i think it's important to bring that up uh but you know if you do choose to to eat quinoa and that's your personal preference uh it is it does actually contain a lot of protein and unlike other grains it also has unsaturated fat it's a good source of fiber so uh eat it sustainably don't eat it every day uh is is what i would recommend uh amaranth amaranth is also it's actually a seed so for people who are not able to tolerate gluten in their diet and they're vegetarian then it's a good source um you know of fiber as well uh you can also you also get amaranth flour so you can make it into a roti uh you can make it into a porridge so it's quite a versatile ingredient um and yeah it's it's about 4.6 grams of of protein but again it it's um it also has fiber uh, and calcium and iron spirulina uh if if you're able to kind of tolerate the smell um uh, because it does smell a little fishy like uh it's excellent um it it is a complete protein it's an excellent antioxidant it also has uh, quite a few b vitamins in it and so essentially the only way to eat it, to drink it rather is just to kind of put it in your, your smoothie um you can mask the smell um with you know a, 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 often if you take like a frozen banana and uh, blitz it into your smoothie the spirulina melon taste kind of comes down if, if you can't handle that um okay and if you if you do eat dairy and if you are open to having dairy then milk cheese and yogurt uh, are also you know very good sources of protein um so uh, i would again as much as possible i would say try to choose if you're going to have a cheese don't go overboard obviously just a little sprinkling of it is fine but try to choose protein uh, try, try to choose uh, cheese uh, that is unprocessed um there are a lot of places that are now making cheese locally so you know choose someone locally try to not eat processed cheeses it has a lot of emulsifiers and additives that you don't really need um and milk also if if you're someone who who drinks milk and who's comfortable digesting it then um then yeah that that's another source of protein and um it's a really good 
um, like so for example if you just finish up a game uh, you know milk is re a really good combination of carbs and, and, and protein and a great post recovery to do as well okay um, essentially our rice and dal is also fantastic you know a fantastic source of complete protein whether it's brown rice or white rice even though they're low in one um, uh, amino acid called lysine they are high in met met methionine so if you compare if you combine that with a dal, you are getting a complete amino acid profile. So I'm not saying you have to ensure that all your um, meals are complete proteins because you're going to get amino acids and proteins through the day. But these are just different combinations that I uh, that I wanted to share. Uh, the other thing that's simple is like a peanut butter or almond butter sandwich. Um, again, uh, when you compare, when you combine your bread to with peanut butter, it becomes a complete uh, so that's just another example of how to get that in. Uh, hummus and pita because hummus has chickpeas that are also uh, fairly fairly high in protein. Um, and yeah, these are just some examples that I've listed out uh, that you can look at. Again, I don't think we get tempeh too much in India, but uh, tofu is definitely an option. Uh, I really haven't covered things like vegan meat and vegetarian meat because we don't have access to that right now. So uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the next few slides. Um, so again, it's important to make sure that you're getting enough of these specific minerals, um, you know, in, in what you're eating, uh, zinc, calcium, and your fatty acids. Uh, what I will share with you is, is vegetarian sources of how you can add them into your diet, because these are important uh, minerals and essential minerals for us. Um, unfortunately, we don't really get fortified food in India. So it's a little difficult to expect that from milks and breads, but uh, we it is possible to put that back in. Okay, this is just a very uh, basic example of how you get how you can get your protein through the day. Okay, and again it varies. Again, you can see for some it's forty nine, for some it's fifty three. Again, I would I would recommend you to calculate your individual protein requirement and then really decide. But what's in, what, I, what I do want to suggest is divide your protein up through the day. So, for example, if you look at the right, uh, eggs for breakfast is great. Uh, a lentil salad, which could also be your dal, uh, which could also you know, be your paneer. And at night, uh, again, having something like tofu, having a mix of brown rice would also add in. So I, I, I'm, I'm not only focusing on protein, but I just want to talk about this a little bit more because I think in general, we need to eat more vegetables, but I want you to understand how you can derive the maximum benefit out of it. These are just an other few examples. So peanut butter is a very easy thing you can add in, um, even as like a pre-workout, post-workout snack, it's good. Um, and yeah, these are just some visual examples for y'all. Uh, but again, when we look at a, a, a plate and we say, how do we make sure it's, it's a complete meal? We're not only talking about protein. Uh, let's say okay if we look at having granola okay and uh, we say we need our fruits in we need our grains in we need our plant-based protein uh, which could be nuts and seeds in this case and uh, again your calcium could also come from a plant-based uh, alternative to but what I'm trying to get at is ensure that it covers and checks these boxes and similarly when you have a meal whether it's lunch or dinner Make sure like half of it is vegetables and fruits. Make sure a quarter of it is whole grains and make sure the rest of that quarter is uh, protein. And you want at least two thumbs of uh, nuts and seeds or fat going in as well. Okay, so this is really to have a complete balanced meal. Uh, whether you're vegetarian or non-vegetarian, you'll just replace the protein part of it. The rest of it is universal for everyone. Okay, so just to wrap up uh, recommendations, um, and this is for everybody uh, try to choose organic produce as and when possible and as and when it's really feasible if you going to be a pain to get it then please don't do it uh, there are a lot of people in Bangalore and a lot of farms who are doing like weekly uh, subscription boxes so that's one option uh, I would also recommend eating locally and seasonally as much as possible like don't eat avocados that have come from south america rather like choose to eat avocados where when they're in season and you know, when they're produced like locally in chikmangalore or wherever it is um if you do have dairy please switch to a2 milk or organic dairy uh, aksha kalpa is an option happy milk is an option uh, 
uh, that's available in Bangalore. Uh, yeah, sorry for the typo. Uh, but eating a varied diet also you know, leads to a diverse microbiome. And, I, and I'd like to stress that because uh, having a healthy and robust microbiome means that our whole ecosystem of our body is also balanced. There's no perfect way to get that balance in, but ensuring we get enough fiber through the day is one and ensuring we get all these different elements on our plate is the other. Okay, again, with all foods, as much as is possible, try to choose something that's whole uh, versus something that's refined or processed. So to give you an example, even though Quaker oats are super easy to make in the morning and they take two minutes, by the time you know the Quaker oats are processed, there's really no nutri nutrient value left in them. You'd rather have uh, rolled oats or steel cut oats. And so for example, if you don't have time, in the morning, all you have to do is do like overnight oats. So you make them the previous night, stick them in the fridge, and in the morning, you just take it out, right? So there are hacks to kind of get through cooking time. So for example, if, you, if you're working and you don't have too much time, um, you know, I would say try to use one of these hacks. Again, uh, I also would like to stress on the fact because lentils and legumes will form a large part of your intake. Please ensure that you soak them overnight. Um, I, I will also share with you all a sprouting and soaking guide. Uh, it's important to do that because uh, protein, I mean, uh, legumes have a covering around them that are kind of like anti-nutrients. Okay. And so when you soak them in water, that, that phytic acid gets released and it's not harmful anymore. And, and even when we eat that, it's, it's easier, much easier to digest. So uh, I'll share with you all a soaking and sprouting guide just because that's like a best case practice for what to do with it. Um, okay, my recommendations for everyone, this is not only for people who are vegetarian, uh, once or twice a year, please get these levels tested, okay, uh, a lot of them are very essential to things like energy, stress, uh, and they're very easy to fix, okay, um, vitamin B12 and vitamin D, like I said, are essential vitamins, and a lot of the time, most of us do need them in some you know, form, um, homocysteine is actually something that's not checked too often, but I want to mention it here because homocysteine, again, it's an amino acid that needs to break down in our body. But a lot of the time, uh, we don't have enough uh, of a spectrum of B vitamins to break this down. Okay. And so if it, if it remains high in our body, it can be inflammatory. So it's just another additional parameter to check. Uh, iron and ferritin are also very, very important. So for example, um, women do have a different requirement for iron compared to men okay and sometimes having a combination of low b12 low iron low hemoglobin can lead you to become anemic uh, and especially around your menstrual cycle or if you're thinking of getting pregnant you want to be careful about those markers so i'd say try to check that once a year um, and your cholesterol profile as well again it's not about seeing what's good and bad uh, what we do want to definitely improve is our, all our levels of hpl which is what we call high density lipoprotein. So that's essentially the cholesterol that, um, you know, it, it actually collects all the cholesterol all, all of your body and takes it to your liver to get metabolized. And so we want those, we want to check those ratios. So again, if you notice you have a deficiency, only then supplement. I don't recommend supplementing randomly. Like a lot of the time I hear people saying, oh, I'm vegetarian or vegan, I'm just going to take a B12. Um, having a higher level of B12 is not essentially good for you. Okay, uh, no doubt it's a water soluble vitamin. So if you have anything in excess, you will you know, essentially urinate it out. But it's always better to check your level and then you know, have, a, have someone like a nutritionist or a doctor suggest what dose to take. Okay, so just takeaways. Um, and this is again for people in general, always choose a whole grain over a refined grain for carbs. Uh, again, ensure you get your fats for the day, vegetables and fruit, easy, eat the rainbow, just try to get at least three colors if you can every meal. Uh, and in, in the current circumstance, whatever's available. Um, again, fiber is also something you want to get sufficiently through the day and protein. Again, your individualistic requirement is more important. And based on that, calculate you know what you need for the day. Okay, so um, also, um, you know, because a lot of you all did uh, watch Game Changers and, and changed your minds about it, I, I will uh, recommend that you read this article that I'm going to share with you all. 
it, it is by a sports scientist and it's it's important to kind of also look at the flip side of what the movie didn't cover i think what the movie really brought out really well is the environmental requirement for us to eat more plant based uh, and it did that uh, really really well and it also you know made us a lot more aware but um as someone who does work with athletes i think that being vegan and being vegetarian is a choice that you have to make uh, after you kind of tried it out you know like you don't want to suddenly change uh, say like a week before your tournament right your body has to adapt to it your body has to get used to it and it's very very important so when you're doing any kind of diet change or when you're doing any kind of um, you know philosophy change of how you look at food please make sure that you know what you're taking out and you're putting back in you know what you're losing so yeah i think that's that's about it uh, if you guys have any questions then i would be happy to answer them uh thank you alia ma'am that was very informative and selim ma'am thank you too i just have a couple of questions uh, it was very informative on vegetarian protein and me being a vegetarian i find it really really hard uh, to track and consume so yeah. my first question to you would be uh, so there are carbohydrates that are associated with things like you know lentils and dal etc so uh-huh. when you are on a restrictive diet in in this in terms of a caloric deficit let's say the uh-huh. amount of carbs that you get from let's say something like chickpeas is very uh-huh. very high when compared to the amount of protein that you get from it. so the carb to protein ratio which you get from dal yeah. and things yeah. like that yeah it, it kind of adds on to the amount of cal- overall calories that you're consuming so is there any pointer that you can give with regards to consumption of this um again is i mean are you currently on a calorie restrictive diet uh, not a big caloric deficit but about 300 calories to 500 calories just a small deficit okay um again i as i as i mentioned before i think you need to again depending on what your activity levels are i would say calculate how much protein you need to get for it through the day uh for what you're doing and get it from a variety of sources you know uh, obviously every source will have a little bit of carb and a little bit of protein but my recommendation would be to get it from different sources through the day there's no real ratio that you have to maintain between carbs and proteins but um i'll share with you like a protein list and i think that's more important is to really you know get your protein at each meal and not you know fixate on saying okay i'm getting less chi- i'm getting less protein from chickpeas compared to chicken um you know what do i do i think i, I don't think that's so and that's as important uh and my next question would be uh, measuring raw versus measuring cooked i mean when we take chickpeas uh, let's say 50 grams of chickpeas before soaking overnight uh, it's going to weigh much lesser from what it weighs after soaking or let's say cooking so will that bring a d- difference in the amount of uh, calories that you are consuming uh so typically we look at cooked values okay yeah so i would say measure after you finish cooking and then see because even with things like rice and stuff uh, like one cup can yield you know up to triple or double i would always say measure after it's cooked okay yeah thank you no problem uh alia i had a question so uh, for yes. example i i think ever since i switched to uh, being vegetarian i've also started taking supplements because i think that's something that came up after all the tests that i do have to take you know b12 and d3 in general yeah. is there a minimum or a basic dosage of b12 and d3 that uh, one should get um well i think that it really depends on uh, on what your value is and i would really recommend you to check Mm-hmm. you can take a uh, you know like a dose of maybe 500 cc up to 1000 is also fine there's, there's no harm but um sometimes b12 your b12 levels can go on the higher side and that can also happen i mean it's a little complicated but that can also happen if you don't have enough b6 and b9 to clear it out mm-hmm. okay so uh, i i mean i wouldn't say there's a there's a recommended dosage i would always say for any supplement that you're taking unless it's in a really really low dosage 
you know, do a blood test first, see what your level is at, and then choose to supplement. Always. And, and again, what you also want to be doing is doing a follow-up blood test to see, you know, has that actually worked? Mm -hmm. Have my levels actually been, have they actually improved uh, or not? Because say, for example, with things like B12, it's not so important as externally taking it. It's also how can my body actually absorb it, right? And this is the thing about vegetarians and non-vegetarians. It's a, it's a human absorption issue sometimes. So, for example, if you don't have enough stomach acid, then that's another reason for your body not to be able to absorb B12. So, my recommendation is to always check and then supplement. All right. Thank you. Uh, guys, any other questions? I guess uh, there are no questions right now. Uh, okay. Alia, uh, so I think what we could do is uh, whatever uh, links that you want to share, uh, yeah. maybe we could just send an email in the end so everybody has it accessible. Yeah. Sure. yeah? sure. Sounds good. Okay. And if there's anything else that you guys want with regards to, uh, you know, how to plan uh, your intake, uh, you know, let us know. You can either email us or call us anytime. No I will problem. share your both your email IDs uh, in the response mail that I sent to everybody. So I think they should have that as well. Great. Okay, perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Ali and Celine. This was great. This was super okay. helpful. Thank you yeah. so much. And thanks, everyone, okay. for joining. See you all soon. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.